Hello, this is Victor. I'm here with a new battle report. This time we're going to make a battle of 2 versus 2. And it's 1,500 points, Arlequins and Chaos versus the Slanish and Tyranids. Let's first make a look to the list. From Arlequins, uh, this is the army I'm using. I decided to use two uh, different formations. So I use the Heroes, Heroes Path, Solitaire, the Jester, Shadow Seer, and the cast of player is with the Shadow Seer and Death Jester and seven players with fusion pistols, neurodisruptors, caress, keys. So full equip. The, it's about 400 points unit. Uh, I, I wanted, just wanted to taste these two formations to see how they work. Um, maybe I over equip the, the cast of players formation, but the problem is, uh, yeah, I have to fill 750 points. And yeah, if I want to keep using formations and not go to unbound, I, I need to, yeah, it was not a space enough points to go for a third formation. Maybe I should this, I should go for unbound this time that we play so little num um, points because Harlequins uh, are not very flexible when you go to low cost of points. Uh, if you want to play pure Arlequins, it's not you have to go with allies and just use one of the formations and allies from other codex. Uh, from Escape Space Marines, uh, we have a Sorcerer level 2, 10 Cultists, 10 Marines in Reno with 2 Meltas, 10 Marines in Reno with 2 Meltas, and a Soul Grinder. So, yeah. And then from Demons, uh, he's using a demon prince with wings, uh, mark of Slanish, 11 demonets, 11 demonets, 3 fins, and 3 fins of Slanish. The demonets are with icon and the, the instrument of chaos. From Tyranids, Hive Tyrant, so a fly tyrant, Hive Tyrant with wings, uh, and the shooting of Strength 6. One Maulok, one Tyrannocyte with the Carnifex inside, and a Lictor. So really an unbound Tyranid army. So yeah, let's, uh, as in my previous battle uh, report, I will use these diagrams to explain a little bit the deployment and to explain what is in there. And then you will see pictures to see how the um, battle is really going on. We played in a table that is two by, um, sorry, four by four. Uh, and yeah, the, we play a mission to capture the objective at the end of the battle, and we have five objectives. The turn is is not variable number of turns; it's five turns. Uh, all the pink or purple, the the purple squares are ruins, so it's four plus safe and um, cover safe, and then the the one rectangle on the top left is a trench, so it's also 4 plus cover safe. And there are two hills that are these two semicircles in the corners. Uh, yeah, we deployed and so I had the, the Warlord trait to see, to add for my role to seize initiative, so I decided to give them the initiative because we also win to know who is first in deploying. They counteract very well my decision by not deploying anything and they just deploy a unit of fins that is the F1 and, a, and the Lictor that is the L. Uh, from my side uh, I deploy the Death Jester, the Solitaire and the Shadow Seer as you can see as they have infiltrate they can deploy deeper in, in my opponent's battlefield. Uh, I deploy the unit that one is the the one that is uh, with the TD, SS and DG means the the troops the, sh the Shadow Seer and the Death Jester, they go together and they are in, in, my, in our red flank. And then in the middle we deploy the Cultists, a flank with, uh, with one of each windows in each flank. And the Soul Grinder and just next to the objective number 5. So anyway, I decide, we decide to move forward to where the only units of my enemy was. I don't think this was the best tactics. I think we should uh, keep our, at least, uh, and the chaos should keep in our deployment zone. But he wanted to move forward. Uh, I also move forward to win the ruins, to win more center in a position where I can reach more points in the battlefield. 
I move the solitaire trait to protect the shadow seer because I want to have the shadow seer in range to be able to shoot and use the, some of the psychic powers. Anyway, our shooting psychic powers was completely inefficient. I didn't manage to do a single one to them. And yeah, and we finish here the turn one. And here are some pictures. As I did in my previous battle report, I first I used the diagrams to show how how the battle is going, and then you can see pictures, uh, real pictures of the battlefield. So here, the picture of the bands of the rhinos is a overview of the battlefield. And this is from on the side of our opponents, the digester in this uh, trench here. And, yeah, and we see the lictor there behind the ruins. Here we have the vision of the digester over the lictor. Another view. Yeah. You see the lictor is behind this building and is covering a lot the lictor, so it's very impossible to reach, almost impossible to reach him. And the fins of the slanish are hiding within these ruins. So this was very difficult to reach. I tried to to see if we can damage them and see if, uh, but it was not feasible. Also with the digester, my option was try to make him run out of the battlefield, but it was not possible. Here an overview of the battlefield. Uh, another view where uh, the cultists are on these ruins. And yeah, we some more shots of the battlefield. We can go faster now. And we go to the turn one of Slanish. The lictor go into the ruins. The fins of Slanish move fast and they try to assault my shadows here. And they do so and they kill the shadows here. So this was yeah, this was a mistake from my side, I think. I exposed too much shadows here to the uh, fins of Slanish, trying to see if I have a lucky shot. Uh, I tried to use the secret track, but it was not feasible even to kill them. So I don't I, I think it was a mistake from my side to expose the shadows here in that way. Uh, anyway, they kill the shadows here in the turn one, and yeah, as you can see we go in our turn two. No much to kill there on the table. Yeah, we see how he's moving. The fins, the fins of Slanish just in front of my shadows here, and the shadows here is charged and slain in close combat. And yeah, we have here another view. One more. Then we go now into turn two for the Harlequins. I think here is where we we make. Uh, yeah, my, uh, we were not coordinating and talking to each other. So I was moving my units, my my the one uh, playing chaos, the, my colleague playing chaos was moving his units as he desired. So we were like two armies and trying to to shoot to the same enemy, but not really two coordinated armies. We were two almost two independent, like we are playing two independent armies. So yeah, I moved the solitaire to be able to to reach the elector in the soul phase. I just reposition the with the digester to be sure that I can shoot the elector. I'm not sure I'm going to do any damage to him with, because we have two plus cover safe the ruins. He decided to move all his chaos and um, disembark all his chaos place, space marines to be able to shoot the lictor. The only thing I recommend him is to move back the soul grinder to try to protect the back armor because we are going to have a lot of deep striking units. See all his armies, the, all my opening, our opening army is deep striking. Because uh, the, the other side is deep striking with the carnifex inside, the hive tyran is deep striking, uh, the mauluk also, and all the demons have deep strike. So, and then I don't know why he decided to move the cultist where the objective one is. Well, yeah, I don't see the reason not to move because we are in turn two, so there is no need to move now the the cultist there. But this anyway, this is how he deployed. We shoot, and the shooting, as expected, did nothing to the lictor. He passed all the two plus cover safe, and in my shooting, I think I killed two of the fins of Slanesh. 
and in the south phase I finish the fins of Slanish and the solitaire killed the the lictor with the caress. So yeah, we eliminate all the units on the table from our opponents, but this is not the end of the turn. They have now the turn to so to finalize. To be fair, uh, to be sure that uh, the, um, it says that if at the end of a game turn you don't have units on the table, as this is not the end of the game turn, they have to play the own the turn two to be the end of the game turn. So. It's only uh, possible to kill the opponent if you kill everything in turn one. So here we have how the space, the, the chaos space marines surround the lictor to be able to shoot at him. Another one picture. Here is yeah the surrounding was to expose here in the middle, so it was not need to expose that so much. Uh, the solitaire ready to assault the lictor. See, and yeah, here just explaining all the movements. You see at the bottom of the picture the cultists move out of the cover. No need for that at this stage. Yeah, and there was no need to move all the our army just to surround a lictor. That at the end. The, the solitaire can kill it without any effort. So um, yeah, some fancy pictures. Let's go, and yeah, and we go to Slanish Tyranids turn two. So they deep strike, try strike the whole army except the Maulok. And the demons use the icon, so everything deploy as you can see in our deployment zone with uh, around the demonet unit one that have the icon and leads the other without uh, without um, what it's called scattering. The hive tyrant deployed in the middle, just where is the objective in the middle of the table, and the tyranno seat. Uh, just um, land next to the soul grinder so the carnifex was able to disembark and be at the back at the back armor of the uh, soul grinder so in the shooting phase yeah we start with the warp storm and the warp storm i was very unlucky there he killed three of my harlequins in the unit of the harlequins with the solitaire and the jester and he put two wounds on my Solitaire. So I was very unlucky with the save. He made three wounds. I failed um, two of the three saves. Yeah, yeah. It was not expected that the Warston make that damage. Then uh, the rest of the shooting, uh, shooting did some damage on the Chaos Space Marine units, and uh, he immobilized, immobilized the Soul Grinder. So now the Soul Grinder is completely done. With the carnifex at your back armor and being immobilized, yeah, you are done for the next turn. So this is the what happened. Some scattered damage in different places. For me, what was very hurting is that the solitaire is only one wound. No, uh, without receiving any direct shooting, so just was the worst turn. So and the case of space marines, to be fair, I think that we lost one, two, three. Case of space marines, not so dramatic. The cult is also lost two or three, but at the end was not very bad from the slash of of the demon priest. So yeah, and just to to specify, when we receive damage in a unit, I put this symbol, this like a small explosion, and the red arrows means the shooting lines. Here we see the pictures of the when he starts looking for a position for the tyranids. More pictures of the tyranids preparing to land on heads. They were so here we have some overviews of the battlefield. This is where our chaos space marines are deployed. Here we see the demons arriving from the warp, 
This is the, the, the unit of demonets that you see here on the center of the picture is the first unit of demonets and they drive the rest of the demons into this position. Yeah, really we were in very bad position in this turn two because after moving we leave a very clear area for the demons to land. And here we see the the Tyrannocyte just landing uh, very luckily in that position and the Carnifex arriving from and sorry. Um Disembarking from the Tyran side and being ready to shoot at the back armor of the Soul Grinder. Some more pictures. Here we have the review. Yeah, here are my Harlequins that just received um, the slash of the God Slanish. So I will go fast now. Let's go to the next turn. Here we see that the soul grinder is damaged. We go into the turn 3 for the Harlequins and Chaos. So I just reposition um, my Harlequins inside of these rings. Uh, I didn't have any clear objective and Demonets were out of range for my assault. So I decided to, to win the rings and expecting I'm next to the um, objective number 4. So it's not a bad position. I moved the Solitaire behind the Reno completely height from the line of sight of most of the enemies and then I also move the death gesture and to be closer to the enemy to be in range to be able to shoot the the shuriken cannon uh, the cultists they, they don't have uh, lots of um, places to run away so my opponent decide that just to charge on one of the demonets to see what happens uh, yeah most likely they will lose, but it's the decision we should. Then I don't know why my, my colleague wanted to shoot everything on the Hive Titan. I didn't have any other objectives, so I was completely out of range of any other thing. But my colleague decided to shoot everything on the Hive Titan, and we did zero wounds. We did nothing. So was a lost turn. So and the shooting on turn three was completely a lost turn. Uh, the cultists uh, shoot and assault the demonets. We kill some demonets. Uh, we lost in the close combat. We ran away, luckily, and we we will not. We were not slain. We just ran there between the ruins and the border of the of the table. So yeah, lesson from here: don't shoot or don't um, yeah. Don't use a, a, a full shooting round just to try to make a wound on a hive titan that is flying. Does not make sense. It's better that you try to kill other units that are easier to kill. And to be fair, it was not that easy because the units were well protected in ruins, but the hive titan was completely out of our reach. Here we see the marines just move to be a little bit more in, in position. The hive titan is there in the middle. But this flying is in arenes, so have the 4 plus cover save, plus uh, the 3 plus armor, and it's flying, so it's, uh, and, and toughness, I guess it's 5 or 6, so it's not easy. And, yeah, and there we have him. And, and the problem is we didn't have any good anti-air. The only anti-air we have is Soul Grinder. He decided to shoot the Harvester Cannon of the Soul Grinder into the, uh, and this guy. I think it was better used to shoot uh, the flame onto the demonets and do some damage on these demonets because we are going to, we will need to eliminate them at the end of the battle. 
So here we see uh, from the position of the sword binder how he is looking the battlefield. And most likely he's going to be dead next turn because with the current effects at the back armor, yeah, ready to assault you is not the best position to be. Although if he's assaulting, it goes to the front armor. But anyway, uh, with all the shooting and first strength six, just I think he will be able to kill the soul binder. So here we see an overview. Uh, just some fancy pictures. The solitaire trying to hide himself behind the rhino. And here is how he's hiding the fins of a slanish just behind the building to avoid the shooting. Yeah. And our unit just running away. Some more pictures. And we go into the turn three for Slanish and Tyranids. So the demon prince just fly where is where my harlequins are. On the ruins, the Hive Tyrant uh, decided to move uh, um, in in the other side, and the Maulok tried to appear to deep strike on top of the Chaos Space Marines, but he scattered a lot and just appeared next to my Solitaire. Uh, the, uh, the Demonets prepared to assault the Cultists, the two Demonets, and the Finn move. To help the Carnifex, I don't think is needed. I think the Carnifex alone can kill the Songbinder. And the Tyranno side just move a little bit to be in range and to keep shooting onto the Chaos Space Marines. So, as I say, the red arrows are the shooting and the assault in the case. So, the Demonets assault. Um, we pass the leadership death, we, we make some fight. I don't know if we kill one or two Demonets, but they completely obliterate the unit. And yeah, and we lost there the librarian. I forgot to mention that the librarian was inside of the unit of cultist. Uh, the Carnifex is expected to kill the Songbinder. And here the Hive Tyrant decided at the end to shoot everything onto the Solitaire. Solitaire only with one wound reminding and died uh, under the shooting of the Hive Tyrant. So I wanted to use him against the Maulog. But yeah, this was not feasible because this was the, my only tool to really kill the Maulok. And the Demon Prince used the slash and the shooting on on the Harlequins. And I think, yeah, he killed uh, completely the unit. And now it's only the two Master, the Solitaire and the Digester that survive from this unit. This Demon Prince is very killing. 2d6 impacts with the slash. It's quite strong against the the Harlequins, and he was very lucky. I think he rolled 12 and two turns in a row, and this time he rolled just nine or eleven, something like this. It was quite brutal. So here we see how the Demonets are surrounding or are preparing to assault the cultists with the librarian. Uh, the Maulok that have deviate a little bit too much. The Demon Prince chasing my. The Demon Prince indeed is in the first floor, he's not on the ground, but to avoid that he's falling down, we, we place it like you see in the picture. Yeah, here we see some demons were killed at the end, the Liberian was alone and ran away. Uh, yeah, here when we. the. Demon Prince prepared to slash my Harlequins. So some more pictures here we, we see. This is when the Hive Tyrant killed the Solitaire. You see it was behind the Reno. I forgot to take off the wounds markers. But he, the, this guy killed completely the... Well, removed the last wound from the Solitaire. And here we see more pictures of the... Face of so the shooting here, the and this is when the Soulbinder was killed in the. Show. We go into Harlequin's turn four. So I think 
the main objective and the easiest objective for us to damage at this moment is the Moloch. So I move this Jess Jester inside of the ruins to have some protection. Remember, he has the Steels and the Steels and the Rolled. I was yeah using the Psychic Power to give Steels and the Rolled to to my Arlequins most of the time, so they also have some good protection. But I was quite unlucky with the save and all these type of things. Uh, and yeah, and when I received the slice, was the only turn that I didn't have this roll that in the steel. And the chaos is placed in the position to be able to shoot. Also, they decide, he decided to shoot to the Moloch. So we're going to shoot everything on the book. Pam, 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 pam. And we did four wounds. So Moloch is on two wounds reminding. So yeah, we wanted to kill him, but it's not possible. We are not a shooting army. Um, I, I just, yeah, I, I think uh, there was not a clear other objective for my Harlequin Snyder. So I know that uh, the three shots of the Jester is not enough. Uh, he's a, a monstrous creature, so he is fearless. So he's not going to run anywhere. We go into Slanish and Tyranids, turn four. He moves the Hive Tyrant and make a hit, uh, the, the, the hit that the Flyers do, and kill my Solitaire. He managed to make a wound of strength 6 and kill uh, my Solitaire, my Death Jester, sorry. And the Demon Prince just fly over the Chaos Space Marines, ready to know punish the Chaos Space Marines, and the rest of the Demons just reposition and Tyranid just re mm, reposition and go more to the middle of the table. Shooting phase, he killed one of the Rhinos and one of the units of the Chaos Space Marines with all the shooting. Uh, yeah, not much to say here. Also some pictures, the movement of the different units. See here in the middle, the Mauloc, ah, the Mauloc I made, forget to mention, the Mauloc went into reserve again to be able to uh, do again his attack. Pictures. The yeah, the hive titan fly over the the jester killing him. Yeah. The you see the tyrannocyte is moving closer and closer, but the, he's controlling the objective that is just in that quadrant is in this small base next to the tyrannocyte. This at this point, yeah, we were we had very little chances to do a good roll in this battle. Yeah, here we see the Moloch has disappeared from the table because he went underground, and the and the Demon Prince just moved there to be able to keep punishing the Beast Marines. The Demonets move here next to the objective, so the Demonets will try to hold the objective at the backwards. Let's go, and then we go to, yeah, the battle is five turns, so no variable duration. So we just play, the, I think the only way was possible at this moment. So the Chaos Space Marines move to control the objective four. I move my Harlequins to solve the Demonets and see if I can control the, this objective. And the Reno just move on the ruins, try to control the objective in the middle of the table. Uh, the shooting did nothing. I assault the demonets. I kill one demonet and he make one wound in return. So really very disappointed with the assault of my harlequins. Uh, I lost because he has the icon, but I passed my leadership. So we went into the turn five for the Spanish team. Yeah, our army was very thin at this point. Uh, we were very dispersed on the battlefield, so he just moved position this arm uh, this his army to be able to shoot the Moloch appear and kill two mar chaos space marines when he appeared from the underground and to have enough room to deploy uh, this is um yeah and at the end our three units were slain so uh the shooting of the Demon Prince completely obliterates again Boxcars in, in the 
on, on the slice of the lineage, he completely obliterated the Chaos Space Marines. I think the Hive Titan with the shooting killed the Reno. And then the Demonets completely make a sandwich with my Harlequins and kill them. So, yeah, victory of the Slanish this time, Slanish and Tyranids. So here we see my Harlequins fighting with the Demonets. The other unit of Demonets going to help the first one. Uh, yeah, the Carnifex controlling the objective in this command. There are the Maulok appearing underground again. The Fins of Slanage moving closer to the Reno just in case the uh, Hive Titan cannot kill the Reno. See there, the Fins of Slanage to surviving next to the Rhino. So here, how they kill between him, how the Demon Prince kill. The Chaos Space Marines, the Hive Titan, destroy the tank, and the Demonets. Here we see the fire. And the picture of the fight. We see, and then they slide completely. The Harlequins. So as I said, victory for Slanish and Tyranids. I think yeah, we didn't play it as a as a as a organized army. We played as a two separate armies that we were not coordinating. I think we made a lot of mistakes, leaving a lot of space for the demons and the Tyranids to come from Deep Strike. I think you should make more difficult and force uh, the Deep Strike in units to, to go where you want and not where they want. Uh, was not any need to run and rush to kill this uh, this um, what's called um, Lictor and and Fins of Slanish, exposing my my shadows here just to be killed so easily by by the Fins of Slanish was not the way to go. So yeah, but was a nice battle, was interesting, and was Harlequins. Yeah, Harlequins should not be allied with Chaos. I think we should do Harlequins and Tyranids against Slanish and Chaos makes more sense. But anyway, nice battle. And Slanish this time eats some Harlequins. So that's all. Thanks for watching. And see you again later. Leave your comments below. Like if you like it. Bye.